I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons first. Thank you so much to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Howlers, and my Biblio Mansers. It means a lot to me that you give me your extra support for my passion and hobby. Hey everyone, uh, Patakir. It has only been uh, 10 days or 9 days since my previous episode of SFF Spotlight, but I have a lot of topics to talk about already, so I might as well start SFF Spotlight episode uh, 54. Also, I am in the middle of recording my bookshelf tour video, and it is taking me... Uh, longer than I thought it would be so I hope I can release that within next week but I, I make no promises I hope I can do that but anyway back to the topic as always SFF Spotlight is a series of videos where I will talk about new book news new cover reveal new special edition new Kickstarter campaign and also new release in the adult science fiction and fantasy uh, genre and today I will start by talking about new book news first the first one is regarding one of my most anticipated sequel and also one of my most anticipated release and it is for Champion of the Fallen by M.L. Spencer. So this one is the sequel to Dragon Mage. Dragon Mage is one of my favorite books. It is also one of my favorite self-published fantasy books. It was originally a one-off standalone novel but due to a lot of demands it has become I think a trilogy and after quite a while Finally, M.L. Spencer has mentioned in a recent interview that quite likely that Champion of the Fallen will be released in the month of April or on the month of May this year. And I think that is a really good news for me and I think it is a sign for me to do a second read of Dragon Mage. Hopefully, uh, the Kickstarter campaign edition, uh, the Kickstarter campaign edition of the Dragon Mage Leatherbound edition will arrive and then I can do a second read of Dragon Mage using that edition. I really love uh, that book and I hope I can relieve the tale of Aram and Marcus uh, again. It has really been quite a while and I look forward to doing this second read. And the next book news, again, this is just like a Champion of the Fallen, this is one of my most anticipated sequels of all time just like probably really up there close with wind and truth and also the strength of the few the strength of the few is the sequel to the will of the many by uh, james arlington and wind and truth is the sequel to uh is the fifth book in the stormlight archive but this one i am talking about fury of the gods yes the third and the final book in the blood swan saga so for quite a while now this book this third book in the series well it has been on amazon for quite a while now and on Amazon, US or UK, the release date is in October 2024. But I don't want to put my hopes up in case this is just a placeholder. But seeing that, well, Edward Gwynn and also uh, William Gwynn, my brothers, well, they have started talking about uh, reading Fury of the Gods. So about seven months before the release of the Fury of the Gods. So it is most likely that this release date is true so you know what that means john Gwynn is back john Gwynn, one of my favorite authors of all time will be back with another book this year that is something that i did not predict and well it is a blessing i am always i have always been a fan of john Gwynn. i think if you have been following my reviews and also my youtube channel you know how much i love his work especially uh, the faithful and the fallen or everything in the banished land saga well that is not true everything that he has ever written uh, really and i look forward to reading the conclusion to the blood swan saga usually john Gwynn is the best when he's writing the final book in the series in my opinion because rat and then a time of courage in my opinion are two of his best books so far and i hope the fury of the gods will join the ranking and this means that i will have to do a second read of the shadow of the gods and also the hunger of the gods soon and yeah that is not a complaint i am so looking forward to doing that and speaking of rumor being confirmed i have another exciting news this is about blood over bright haven by ml wang for quite a while just like uh, the fury of the gods I have known about the fact that Blood of Bright Haven is being published, traditionally published by Del Rey Books. And now ML Wang has officially confirmed that just like The Fury of the Gods, this is coming. The traditionally published edition is coming in October 2024. And I look forward to seeing the new cover art or whether it will use the previous cover art. But regardless, this is a huge congratulations to ML Wang and I hope Blood of Bright Haven will do well being traditionally published. And the next book news is about a new work by Naomi Novik. This one will be a collection of short stories. Uh, the title is Buried Deep and Other Stories. So this one will collect short stories from the Tamara series and also I think the Scholomance 
and also including a short story from her upcoming new fantasy book. So yeah, if you are a fan of Naomi Novik, I think this will be a good news as for me. Well, I think many of you know that uh, Abrutet is one of my least favorite book of all time, but at the same time, Spinning Silver is one of my favorite standalone of all time. So yeah, it is 50-50 for me. I hope I, will, I hope I can get around to reading a Scholomance uh, soon, but if not, I would try reading Buried Deep and other stories and fingers crossed. Uh, I will end up liking it. The beautiful cover art to this one is illustrated by Sam Dunn. And then after that, we have a new book announcement and also a new cover reveal. And this is for Candle and Crow by Kevin Hearn, the third book in the Ink and Sigil series. This series do take place in the same world as the Iron Druid Chronicles. And honestly speaking, I haven't read anything by Kevin Hearn yet. I heard that uh, his urban fantasy books are great, but somehow I am interested in reading his epic fantasy books. I think the title of that series is The Seven Kennings. Yeah, I think that's the title of the trilogy. And that trilogy, I think, is completed already. So I might end up reading that. But if you're a fan of the Iron Druid Chronicle series and also the Ink and Sigil series, well, this one is being released in the month of uh, October this year. And the cover art is once again illustrated by the same artist, Sarah J. Coleman, and it matches the previous two books. I think it is a great direction and also a great cover art. But that's it for the topic of new book news. Now let's move on to talk about new special editions. So for this one, this is just news regarding an upcoming special edition. And I'm talking about Empire of Silence by Christopher Rocchio. I think it is almost like, I think it is almost uh, universally known now that uh, Empire of Silence hardcover is really hard to get by. Many book collector and also fan of the series really know about this. And well, there is a new Empire of Silence edition coming, but this is not uh, the standard hardcover. This is the Anderida edition. So this will be a limited and also very high quality edition, probably around the same uh, quality as the Diamond edition of Empire of Silence. So if you missed out, on the diamond edition and also uh, the standard hardcover and you want to get you want to try uh, your luck at getting the hardcover edition of empire of silence published by anderida well make sure to check out their website i think on their website they have listed the topic specifically for the sun eater and you should really check that out one really important thing in my opinion anyway uh, to note about the anderida edition the cover art and probably uh, interior illustrations, they will be illustrated by Kieran Yanner. So, well, it is pretty much 99% the quality of this artwork and illustrations, they will be absolutely incredible because Kieran Yanner is the artist in charge of the cover art of Howling Dark Out to Disquiet Guts. Yes, all the beautiful cover art, the US edition, all of them are illustrated by Kieran Yanner. But Empire of Silence, which looks incredible as well. It was illustrated by Sam Weber. So this will be the first Kieran Yenner illustration for uh, Empire of Silence. Despite how much I love the series, I'm still not sure whether I will be able to get a copy of this one because I know the shipping fee from Anderida to my place is absolutely insane. <laughs> so yeah, but if you want to try your luck at getting this, I wish you the best of luck. And moving on after that, finally, Finally, I can reveal the cover art of Death House Gates by Steven Erickson, uh, the Broken Binding Edition, illustrated by Felix Ortiz. Note that this cover art doesn't have any typography yet, but yeah, this was a challenge and also a pleasure because I'm the art director behind this scene. This scene, obviously, if you have read Death House Gates, you will know which one this is. This is the Battle of Vatar Crossing or the Day of Blood. There is absolutely no way that I don't choose Coltain and the Chain of Dogs to appear in the cover art of Death House Gates. It is a must. And I'm quite surprised that no edition of Death House Gates has ever featured the Battle of Vatar Crossing. And well, I have decided to do that. <laughs> and yeah, I'm really happy with how this turns out. This was, as I said, a challenge to uh, do it right. As you can see, there is a lot of elements going on in this cover art. And also, I mean, the refugees alone is difficult and also Coltane. And I also told Felix that one of the best things about, one of the most memorable things about the Battle of Vata Crossing is how the river uh, turns into crimson, uh, crimson color. 
due to how many bloodshed have been poured. And well, that's what I told him to do and I think he nailed uh, the job wonderfully because well, this is one of the greatest battles in Death House Gates and I like the cover art. Uh, do let me know what you think about the cover art and also the cover art to Memories of Ice is also finished. Hopefully that will be revealed soon and I really love that cover art. No bias here but I really like how that one turns out because it really fits everything in my vision and well I will talk about that more in uh, details later after it is revealed but this is the cover art of Death House Gates. Uh, the Broken Binding Edition. But moving on to the next one, this is regarding the new Sci-Fi Subs subscription of The Broken Binding. So the first one uh, they have announced, this will be, oh, this is bi-monthly, not every month, but this is for Andy Weir collection. So in the month of April, it will be The Martian, and then in the month of June, it will be Artemis, and then in the month of August, it will be uh, Project Hail Mary. And The Broken Binding has mentioned this as well. This is not the final cover art of their edition. Personally speaking, I love The Martian. I think it is Andy Weir's uh, best work. I like Project Hail Mary, but I haven't read Artemis yet. So yeah, uh, if you are a fan of Andy Weir's books, this might be good news uh, for you. And moving on after that, The Broken Binding has also announced that they will be publishing a special edition of Cannot Spell Treason Without T by Rebecca Thorne. This one is a cozy fantasy. I think I know that, uh, I haven't read this book yet, but I know that Rebecca Thorne wrote this book after she has, uh, after she read uh, Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. But as I said, I haven't read this book yet, so I cannot uh, tell you whether this book is good or not. But I am a fan of Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry, so hopefully this one will be as good as Legends and Lattes. And onward to the next one, well, this is not the Broken Binding Edition, but this is the 20th Anniversary Edition of Cloud Atlas by David uh, Mitchell. But the Broken Binding do offer a signed copy of this 20th anniversary edition of Cloud Atlas. Well, I haven't read Cloud Atlas yet. I think I haven't read anything by David Mitchell yet. I have watched Cloud Atlas a long time ago, but yeah, I haven't read anything by David Mitchell yet. If you have read uh, something by David Mitchell, do let me know which one is uh, your favorite book by him. I do have plenty of books by David Mitchell though, so it's just a matter of time, I think, uh, before I end up reading one of his books. And moving on to the next one, this is again another special edition for The Gentleman Bastards by Scott Lynch. Wow, it, I think how, how many times this uh, has been? I think it is three or four times now. But yeah, this is another announcement of another special edition in the Gentleman Bastard series by Scott Lynch. And this is for Red Seas Under Red Skies, but this is the Golang's Emporium edition. Now, I have no doubt that this one, this edition, will not match the quality of the Broken Binding edition. But I must admit, the cover art and also the end paper by Edward Bettison do looks beautiful. And I love this book, I love this series. So maybe if you have acquired the copy of the first one, The Lies of Loch Lamora Golang's Emporium Edition, then I think you might, well, if you are a completionist, you might want to get a copy of this one. I did not acquire The Lies of Loch Lamora Golang's Edition, so I probably will be missing on this one. I will be waiting for the Broken Binding Edition uh, instead. And moving on, we still have three more uh, exclusive edition, and then I will move on to talk about Kickstarter and also Backer Kid campaign. And for the next one, this is for a debut novel, Dance of Shadows by Rokba Payne, Inkstone Edition. I haven't read this book yet. I have Spotlight, I think the cover reveal of this one on one of my episodes of SFF Spotlight. I think it is a unique cover reveal. And also, I don't own anything by Inkstone books, so I cannot uh, tell you regarding their quality. Some readers have told me that Inkstone edition do match the quality of the Broken Binding edition, not the Broken Binding press, but the Broken Binding edition and also even the Create edition. So I think that is a good thing for uh, their price. If you have read this book, Dance of Shadows by Rock Payne, do tell me what you think uh, about it. I have been interested in this book ever since I saw the cover reveal, but as I said, always, well, I have a lot of books, I have a lot of review requests and also advancing copies that I do have to get through uh, as soon as I can. And the next special edition I want to spotlight, this one, I believe, unfortunately, it is sold out already, but at the same time, I do not think that you are missing out too much on this one because this is for Babel by R.F. Kuang. Now, do not get me wrong, 
I absolutely love Babel by R.F. Kuang. This is my favorite book by Kuang so far. But this subterranean press edition, this cover art, this is not it. Not saying that it is absolutely bad or anything like that, but this cover art, it just speaks this is a YA book. And this is not Babel. In my opinion anyway, I know that a subterranean press is trying to approach a character-driven uh, artwork for this one, but when it comes to Babel, because this is not a YA book, I do not think that this is the right cover art for this one. So of course, I missed out on it. I did not buy a copy of this one and I don't regret it uh, one bit. Honestly speaking, when it comes to Subterranean Press, I'm just waiting for the edition of the Green Bone Saga and I think that's pretty much it. And the last exclusive edition I want to spotlight and then I will move on to talk about Kickstarter campaigns. Uh, this is for, again, The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang. It is quite surreal to me and also, well, it is well, it is well deserved that The Sword of Kaigen keeps on getting new edition. And this is for Idigo. I believe this one is located in Canada. But yeah, uh, there, there is a new paperback edition for The Sword of Kaigen in Indigo, Indigo Bookstore. So if you live in Canada and you want a new paperback edition, a new paperback edition with a new cover art of The Sword of Kaigen, this is your chance. As for me, I do not think I'll be getting this one. I already own four copies. Yeah, four copies of The Sword of Kaigen. So yeah, that is a lot already. And that is a new rate mark edition. Uh, coming someday and I look forward to that. But speaking of Red Mark Edition, there is again a new merchandise related to the Sword of Kagen. So this one is published by Wild Crown, which is a branch of Red Mark Creative. And this is for their enamel pin of the Sword of Kagen. If you're a fan of the Sword of Kagen, this is the cross guards of the weapons of the main characters in the Sword of Kagen, Takeru, Misaki, and also Mamoru. So as you can see, this is a cross guard of Siradenya and also Mamori Ken and also Kyogetsu. I think it goes without saying that I'm a huge fan of the Sword of Kaigen. I just did a second read of this book and I loved it as much as the first time I read uh, through the Sword of Kaigen. So I will be waiting for the enamel pin of this one. I have no idea what I will use them for, but I want them, okay? <laughs> so if you are interested in this one, the Kickstarter campaign page for this one is up already. And the next Kickstarter campaign I want to spotlight, this is for the Rydia Chronicles, the deluxe hardcover edition by Michael J. Sullivan. I have talked about this already. This is regarding their standard hardcover and also deluxe hardcover edition of the Rydia Chronicles. And for the first time ever, and I'm really glad to hear this, for the first time ever, it seems like their edition will finally features an interior illustrations. I have always thought that this is something that has been missing from uh, Michael J. Sullivan's special editions and I am glad they have finally decided to do it. And yeah, it has been fully funded. I think it is about to become Michael J. Sullivan's uh, most successful Kickstarter campaign so far. So if you want uh, to get yourself a copy of the hardcover edition of the Rydia Chronicles, or the deluxe hardcover, well, this is your chance. And finally, the last campaign I want to spot that this is a backer kit campaign, and I have talked about this already in my previous episode of SFF Spotlight. This is about uh, Words of Radiance and the fifth uh, secret project novel by Brandon Sanderson. Well, the funding for this one, it is already $18 million. $18 million. It is insane, absolutely insane, and at the same time, I am not too surprised that this reached this number because this is Brandon Sanderson and also Dragon Steel, basically the team responsible for the most successful Kickstarter campaign of all time. And I think, I think this has become the most successful Backer Kid campaign of all time. But I could be wrong uh, on that. There are still uh, plenty of copies left if you want. If you want the Letterbound edition of Words of Radiance and also the Fifth Secret Project. Uh, novel. There are also plenty of bonus and add-ons. I think some of them are actually related uh, to your Knight's Radiance order. I am a Windrunner and also a dancer somehow. And that is quite a surprise for me because even though Kaladin, a Windrunner, is one of my favorite characters of all time, Liv, <laughs> Liv is one of my least favorite characters in the Stormlight Archive. So I'm, a, I'm quite surprised that I am a Windrunner and also a dancer. 
the ranking and also the percentage is always the same. So if you have participated in the test to check which Knight Radiant Order uh, you are, do let me know which Knight Radiant Order uh, you belong to. As for this edition of Worlds of Radiance, I have no doubt it will be even better than The Way of Kings. I think they are going all out on this edition and some of the artists they hired uh, for this edition of Worlds of Radiance, they are <laughs> They are mind-blowing to me. This edition consists of some of the greatest artists in the science fiction and fantasy genre. So that's it for the section of Kickstarter campaign, special editions, and also backer kit uh, campaign. Now, before I move on to the final section of SFS Spotlight to talk about new noteworthy release, I would like to talk about some TV adaptation first. And for the first one, although this doesn't actually belong in the science fiction and fantasy genre, but many fantasy readers and authors do read uh, this book. This is about Shogun by James Clavell. I haven't finished reading this book yet. I haven't even watched the TV adaptation yet, but I heard nothing but excellent things about the TV adaptation. Many people told me that the TV adaptation is even better than the book. So yeah, that, is sound, that sounds incredible uh, to me. But this news is about the season 2 of Shogun. So it has been confirmed that it is most likely there won't be any uh, season 2 for Shogun and I think that is not a bad thing. Assuming that it has adapted everything in Shogun, I do not think it needs to be prolonged unnecessarily. Many TV shows, many books or series do this and it, always, it almost always ends up in failure. So I think it is a good thing that they have decided to not do a second season because they have adapted everything in Shogun by James Clavell and I look forward to watching uh, this adaptation. Seriously, I have been eager to watch the TV adaptation of Shogun uh, for quite a while now and I'm just waiting for more episodes before I dive uh, into it. But although it is confirmed that the season 2 of Shogun is not happening, it seems like uh, the situation for Avatar The Last, A the Last Airbender TV show adaptation is different because season 2 and also the third season is confirmed already for Avatar The Last Airbender TV show. I haven't watched this yet. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I really like uh, the cartoon. I watch every episode of Avatar The Last Airbender cartoon available on Nickelodeon, so I have a soft spot for the cartoon. But at the same time, it has been more than a decade. I don't even know how many years it has been since I watched Avatar The Last Airbender. So if you have watched Avatar The Last Airbender, do let me know uh, whether the TV adaptation the new TV adaptation is worth it or not. I mean, come on, at the very least, it, it is not as bad as the one uh, I watched, right? The movie adaptation. I mean, that one was absolutely awful. I mean, just thinking about it again, I cannot believe I, that I actually watched that movie uh, adaptation. I don't even remember whether I actually finished that or not. It was just so bad. So at the very least, uh, from my perspective right now, I think the TV show adaptation will not be as bad as that one. But if you have watched it, do let me know what you think about it. And then the next adaptation I want to talk about, this is regarding the three body problems or the remembrance of our Earth's past by Qi Xin Liu. This is the new adaptation and yeah, it is adapted by D&D, the one in charge of Game of Thrones adaptation. Now, I will not lie, I love the first six seasons of Game of Thrones a TV show adaptation. I absolutely love them despite the changes. But the seventh season, it was a mixed reading experience and se uh, season eight, well, although I am happy to have experienced uh, the TV show adaptation, I am also not satisfied with how everything ended. It was rushed and this made me a bit reluctant in trying the three, the three body problems adaptation by Qi Xin Liu. But anyway, a new trailer is out and it will premiere on the 21st of March. So yeah, it is soon, about a week uh, from now. My optimist side is trying to think that the 7th and also the 8th season of Game of Thrones, uh, well, it sucks in many sections because, well, George R. R. Martin hasn't written uh, the book yet. That's my optimist side. But this time, well, the materials are there. So if it, again, sucks, well, I think it is a fluke. Uh, Game of Thrones was a fluke from d, d And the last TV show adaptation I want to talk about, this is regarding a new option for The Adventures of Amina Al-Sirafi by Shannon Chakaborty. I have read this book, I liked it, but I did not like the Devaba Chuji. This one, in my opinion, 
is better than City of Brass. And the announcement is that production banner flip narrative set up by Walid Zuaiter, the BAFTA nominated star of Baghdad Central and Gangs of London, and Oscar nominated producer of Omar, has optioned the rights to Shannon Jakaborty's latest novel, The Adventures of Amina Al Sirabi, with plans to develop it into a multi-season series and gaming platform. I'm not too sure how The Adventures of Amina Al Sirafi will work as a as a game, as a video game, but you know what? Uh, this is again an option and we know so many uh, options for TV series adaptation from a fantasy or sci-fi book. Well, they don't happen. I mean, King Killer Chronicle uh, did not happen as well. And that is just one example. There are countless examples of, well, fantasy series being optioned, but the adaptation, but the adaptation uh, never happened, unfortunately. So again, every time there is an option for a new uh, fantasy series or books, I, I would just say that hopefully it will happen and hopefully it will be uh, great. So that's a wrap on the section of TV adaptations. Now let's move on uh, to the final section of SFF Spotlight. Time to talk about a new noteworthy release. And the first noteworthy release I want to spotlight, this is about The Sunlit Man by Brandon Sanderson. Again, uh, this, is, this was the fourth and the final secret project novel. And if you haven't read The Sunlit Man yet, you did not get the Dragon Seal edition of The Sunlit Man. Well, it is now available in public. If you want to read this one though, I do highly recommend that you at least have read every book in the Stormlight Archive, at least, because this one takes place in the future of Cosmere. And I think for me personally, although I do enjoy uh, plenty sections in The Sunlit Man, I also, uh, I, it also felt like I have missed reading plenty of books that I should read first before I read The Sunlit Man. That's my opinion. Uh, anyway, and then after that, the final topic and also the final noteworthy release of the spotlight. This is about uh, Dreams of Fire by Shona Lolos. This is the novella, the prequel novella in the Guile Song uh, series. The Guile Song series is one of my priority series that I want to tackle uh, this year. I think I will start it uh, really soon, hopefully in the month of May or in the month of June. Yeah, the Children of Gods and Fighting Men. Yeah, I really want to start that because I heard so many great things about this Irish-inspired historical fantasy uh, series. But yeah, if you are a fan of the Gal Song series, uh, The Dreams of Fire, the prequel novel to the series, uh, to the main series, is out now. And yeah, I think that's it. That's the end of SFF Spotlight episode uh, 54. So do let me know what you think about all this news that I spotlighted today in this episode. And as I said in the beginning of this video, I will do my best to post my updated bookshelf tour uh, next week. There are, there are a lot of books uh, to record, okay? I think, I think this is just my uh, prediction. I think I have reached more than 1,000 books. That's really officially a library, library of Patrick uh, Leo. So yeah. That's why it is taking a while to record everything. But again, I will do my best. But yeah, uh, that's it. That's really it from me today. Do let me know what you think about my SFF Spotlight episode. Let me know what you think about the news that I spotlighted today. And as always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me. 